of Jacob, I'll not consume you. Even from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts, but he said, Where shall we return? And we now are in the next program. Our next door, I'm a sir, Kakai Mate, and our public prayer will be our brother Maritam. And this one message will be done by our whisper and testimony sharing with the name. And a special prayer for them, MBTS for the students and MBTS for the sports students, alumni members who are doing ministry in the different parts of the world. And for the prayer will be our study group. And now we're going to request our brother Maritam. Jesus Christ. Amen. All by God's grace, we are in this uh, second season of this uh, Holy Prayer meeting. And um, the topic that we would like to share is about, <coughs> once again, we will continue to talk about the pandemic, we will talk about the coronavirus, that many people have been isolated, discouraged, and there are people who are infected with the coronavirus has been absolutely isolated and got discouraged, they are put in quarantine and people are getting discouraged and many people feel very helpless so it is also our responsibility once again as a Christian to encourage the people from the living word of God alright so I would like to uh, talk about from the scripture that testify God's steadfastness, God's faithfulness in the midst of all this pandemic or the COVID-19 or whatever. First of all, I want you to uh, read with me from the Genesis chapter 16 and verse 13. Here you can see that our God is not a blind God, but God sees everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's turn the Bible to uh, Genesis chapter 16 and verse 13. We'd like to talk about this. Oh. Let's turn the Bible down to the Genesis chapter 6 and verse 13. We can clearly see over here. And I request our sister or maybe our sister to do the reading. Our sister really will help us in the Bible reading from Psalm 6, uh, Genesis 16 verse 13. Genesis chapter 16 verse 13. And she called the name of the Lord they speak unto her. Thou dost seize me, for she said, Have I also here to after him that seize me? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's our God. The God that we worship. But many people don't even know who God is. And that's a very sad thing. So we would like to take this opportunity to uh, reveal to our brothers and sisters around the world and also to each and every one of you who our God is. Our God is Jesus Christ. We can see from the Bible, Revelation chapter 21. You can turn to Revelation chapter 21 and uh, verse 6 and 7. And I know that there are people who doubt that Jesus Christ is God. And I'm sure that there are people who say that Jesus may be uh, Lord or he may be uh, 
Abu Prophet or some say he's a sub simply the second God, but there are people who doubt that Jesus Christ is the one true God. So first of all, I want to speak to you from the Bible to make you understand that the, the word the God of the Bible is Jesus Christ. Let's turn the Bible to Revelation 21, verse 6 and 7. Let's hear from it. Revelation 21, verse 6 and 7. Let's read. Revelation 21, verse 6 and 7. And he said unto me, It is done to me, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a crust of the function of the water of life freely. 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. Hallelujah. So the God of the Bible, as we can see here, that he said, it is done, I am the Alpha and Omega, that is, I am the God of the Old Testament, I am the, I am the, I am the beginning and the end, and I will give unto him that is the church of the, uh, of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, that includes abundant life, eternal life, everlasting life, that all things includes, including the everlasting life that we will enjoy after this life. Now, most of the time that we fail to uh, remind ourselves that whether you die with a coronavirus, whether you're infected, whether you are not infected, maybe you always throw you on this, uh, <coughs> you're fond of these, uh, what do you call it, uh, French fries, whether you're always eating on the, uh, so French fries and all kinds of, uh, you know, only uh, non baits You're enjoying everything. You're not, you're not, you know, you don't care about your health and telling. You're doing whatever you want. You're eating whatever you want to eat. You may even leave. Some people continue to leave for 80 years or even 70 years. Still, it happens. But one thing is, my friend, there are people that who are absolute non baits who are very conscious about what they eat, how they dress. And they are very health conscious, you know. There are many people who are very health conscious, but still, then in the morning they are unable to wake up. And some people just sleep in the stairs, and they hit their back, and they die. And one of my friends, my childhood friends, his father, while he was having a lunch with his family, while they had a lunch at the time, uh, I don't know what happened. How they how he swallowed the food, something stuck on his throat, and then he died. He collapsed and he died. So my friend, life is unpredictable. That, that also reminds us, that also tells us that life that we have is not for permitted. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Where you're infected, people are so panic about this coronavirus. So I want to let you know, my friend, do not get panic. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Instead, concentrate in the living God. Look unto Him. Fix your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ and know who Jesus Christ is. That's more important. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Amen. Now, even if you're not infected with virus or any kind of sicknesses, even if you don't have any kind of sicknesses, one thing is clear that someday the other day, we are going to die. Sooner or later. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Including you, including me. Yes. All of us. Someday the other day, we will return to the dust. That's what the Bible said. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Bible in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 7. Let's read for us, uh, readers. Read now. Or anything, 
Even if you're perfectly good, even if you have a perfect good health, still then you're gonna, you are not going to live here on this earth forever. Someday the other day, you will still die. Because the word of God clearly tells us that then so the dust returned to earth as it was, and the spirit still returned to God who gave it. So whether we like it or not, someday the other day, we all have to return to this dust. Because we are made of the dust. Amen. That means, my friend, that we need to give more importance to who our God is. It's a time for us to return to the Bible and know who is the God of the Bible. And our God sees everything. The God who is not a blind God, the God who sees everything, is the God of the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, as far as the Bible is concerned, the Bible never talks about three gods. The Bible never says God is three persons. And that I'm declaring over again and again and again. Hallelujah. We are not attacking any denominations. We are not attacking any individuals. But the truth is, according to the Bible, there is no three God. There is no one God in three persons. God is absolutely one. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Whether you read the Old Testament and the New Testament, the central theme, the central message of the Bible is that God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. That's it. Amen. No, it says God is two, God is three. And, and but then many of us, we are condemning, we are criticizing the atheist seminary because they say, oh, they don't believe in the Trinity. They don't. Where is the Trinity in the Bible, in the Bible by the way? Amen. Hallelujah. Because we are the Bible believing people, it's not in the Bible. We see the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's in the Bible, but not a Trinity. Amen. Praise the Lord. There is no Trinity in the Bible. Amen. So why should we be ashamed of proclaiming the truths and the Bible doctrine? And there are many people are named as Christians. We have been Christians from our forefathers' times. Maybe from your grandfather's time, we have been Christians. And as far as we are concerned, as far as we, the tribals, are concerned, indigenous people are concerned here in India and also in Myanmar, we have been already Christian for the last 100 years. But even to this day, we don't know who God is. The truth is, we don't know who God is. Amen. We do all know that Jesus is the second God. We do know he's only the son, but we cannot accept the fact he's the father as well. Hallelujah. Amen. As a man, he's the father, but as God, he as God, he's the father. Amen. Hallelujah. In his deity, he's the father, and also he's the son, because the term son indicates his humanity. And therefore, in John 10 30, Jesus said, I and my father are one. Nowhere he says, I am a father of two or three or four. And the Bible also uses the terms as holy ones, holy one of Israel, holy one of Israel, the holy one of God. Amen. But nowhere you will come across the terms as this holy three, holy four, or holy five. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You will never come across those kind of terms and phrases in the Holy Bible. The Bible never says holy two, holy three, holy four. So it's time for us, my friends, fix our eyes on the God of the Bible. Know Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Unless you know Him, how can you keep His commandments? So therefore, it is important for us to know who is the God of the Bible. Now remember, the God of the Bible is none other than Jesus Christ. Even the Old Testament testified that, that Jesus Christ is the God of the Bible. The Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, a son is given, his name shall be called the Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So who is the Mighty God, by the way? Who is the Mighty God? Jesus, the Mighty God. Then why are you refusing to accept His word, His commandments? Why are we reluctant? You are not not. You are just a human being. Even for three days, if you are not, if you don't wash up yourself, if you don't, if you don't clean up yourself, then nobody would even dare to come and sit near you because we are totally smelly people. We are made of the dust. We are nothing, my friend. Amen. Understand who you are. You are nothing but a dust. You don't have even the power to extend your life even for one minute. 
Even for one second, none of us have the power to extend our life even for one second. But at times, we are so proud, we don't want to keep God's commandment, we don't want to be baptized, we don't want to humble ourselves. Whereas, the Jewish people only did repent because repentance. Amen. They repented and they keep God's commandment. Hallelujah, amen. amen. The Bible says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. They kept God's commandment. And also, the Bible tells them that they steadfastly continue in the apostles' doctrine. But there are many Christians, even those who are baptized, they will not even continue in apostle doctrines. They don't want to come even in Sunday worship service. So it's a time. In these outbreaks of pandemic, my friend, it's time to examine ourselves as well. Where am I standing? Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Are you even continuing in the doctrine of Christ? For those who have not been baptized and not keep God's commandment, it's a time to keep God's commandment. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. You are very faithful in many other things. I know that. But if you have not been baptized, if you have not washed through your sins, in case if anything happens, forget about this coronavirus at this moment. At, at, the, at this present stage, even in European country, many people even say it's not coronavirus, it's 5G radiation. Whatever it may be. There are many theories out there. It may be 5G, it may be 4G, but one thing is true. 4G tower if it is and stole the 40 tower even birds are dying and everyone knows that and when they often see the birds when the scientists doctors when they often see the, the body of this bird they found out that not just the outside but inside the organs of, of the bodies of the birds everything absolutely dry up the mutation is very, very strong. So we force it if people can die, and if birds can die, then 5G, how strong it will be. You can just imagine. So I'm not saying that it is because of the 5G radiation. I'm not saying that it's because of this. But whatever it may be, one thing is true, my friend, people are dying. It causes the people to die. Whether it's a coronavirus or fatty radiation. But one thing is true, my friend, the people are dying. But it is very important, my friend, I want you to <coughs> focus on this, uh, the living word of God, and un un know the God of the Bible more closely. Because we know that this life is not the end. The life that we have here, this our life, is just for a temporary. Please keep this. Never keep here, almost keep here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's serving. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So what I'm trying to tell you to my friend, the life this we have, the life that we have here, this is not for eternal. Let's we all know that. So this is the time for us to know who our God is. Who is the God of the Bible? The God who sees everything. And we let, let us be rest assured once again from the living word of God. Our God, He sees everything. Amen, hallelujah. He knows everything. He's not a blind God, but He sees everything what's happening. So don't feel isolated. Don't be discouraged. Because God will help you, to, amen, to overcome all these problems and the, and the difficulties that we are enduring at this moment. Hallelujah. Amen. Whenever there is a night, my friend, remember, the morning always comes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage you once again from the living word of God that the Bible tells us that from the Revelation chapter 21, verse 6 and 7, we know that he that overcome it said he read all things. He that overcome it said he read all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So who said that words? According to Revelation chapter 21 verse 6, the one who said, I will be his God and he shall be my son, is none other but Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can anybody deny that? 
Can any theologians and pastors around the world, world white leaders, can, can any Christian leader deny that? And they said we are wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. Can anybody say we are wrong? No. Because that is what the Bible says. Hallelujah. Amen. And according to Revelation chapter 21 verse 6. Amen. Hallelujah. That Jesus said, I am the beginning and the end. I am the Alpha and Omega. The first and last. And then in verse 6 says, And he that overcome that sin, he read all things. I will be his God and he shall be my people. Amen. Hallelujah. So my dear brothers and sisters, now is the time to focus on Jesus Christ. Now is the time to know him and keep his commandments. We can see that according to the scripture that we read from the Genesis 16 verse 30, is the story about Hagar. Hagar experienced absolute social distancing and isolation when she fled in desperation to the desert. There she come, she came, uh, she came to know God as the as the one who truly saw her. In this moment, God's in this moment, notice God's gracious eyes on, on, on us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So therefore, the Bible said in Genesis 16 verse 13, she gave his name to the, to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the God or the one who sees me. Now how can I now finally see who God is? Finally, that Hagar, hallelujah, amen, came to know that who God is. So when she experienced this social descending isolation, when she fled in this desperation and the desert, at that moment when nobody was there, even her, okay, friends that are not there except Ismail and Hagar was all alone in that big desert. No one is there. God was with her. Amen. Hallelujah. And God sees her. So therefore, I want you to focus on God. Because our God sees everything and He will help you to overcome all the difficulties in our life. But one thing that we always need to remind is that let us not get panicked. Uh, let us not be so panicked about these viruses, coronavirus, this and that. Even if we all are not infected. Even if the whole people in this country, even if they're not infected with this coronavirus, one day the other day, we will all die. Because the life that we have today, this life is not for permanent. It's just for temporary. However, we, the children of God, have responded, as I have already said in the first message, as a Christians, as a follower of Jesus Christ, as the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have a role to play. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us not forget. If you want to influence your brothers and sisters, if you want to influence your friends who believe in other gods. Now the God of the Bible, because some people believe in the gods of, they may believe in the pagan gods, they may believe in the holy god or hidden god or different, different goddesses. So if you want to influence, if you want to influence brothers and sisters, friends, who does not believe in Jesus Christ, who does not believe in the God of the Bible, you can influence others to see the God who sees everything. Hallelujah. By helping them, loving them, and caring for them. So therefore I see in the first message that we as Christians, as a follower of Jesus Christ, we have a role to play. We have definitely a role to play. At least extend a helping hand to others. The first message I also told you about Currently in the city of Delhi, there are many hundreds of people around Delhi who does not even have a clean water to drink. But let's give all the glory to God that we could afford at least. God has provided us. It's not that I afford it here. It is God provides. Hallelujah. We have a clean water. At least we have a food to eat. We have the provision. We have the rations at the moment. Praise the Lord. But there are people who are dying on the roads. People are starving. They don't have a food to eat. So as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus Christ, we always have a role to play. Amen. Hallelujah. We have always a role to play. And uh, that's what we always need to do. 
The second thing that one talk about is God, our God, the God of the Bible, is not only seeing the problem that we are facing, He's not only helping us. When everyone's forsake you, when everyone you know, ignore you or put you in isolation, when no one cares you, He always cares for you. Amen? There was a story about a hugger. No one was there for hugger and smile. When both a mother and child, when both a mother and son was in desert, in the wilderness, God sees her. Amen? And blessed her. The second thing before we wind up here is that the God we worship, the God of the Bible, the Jesus Christ, is the God who hears us. When we pray to Him, He always hears our prayers. He hears us. In Zona chapter 2 and verse 2, we can see, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and He answered me from deep in the, in the, in the realms of the dead. I called for help, and you listened to my cry. Let, let's hear from the case of Bible. How does it say there? From Zona chapter 2 and verse 2. Zona chapter 2 and verse 2. Let's read out. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's hear it. Amen. Jonah chapter 2. Verse 2. Verse 2. And say, I cry by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell cry. I am thou heardest my voice. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible clearly says here, when Jonah was in the belly of the great fish or you can say the one's belly okay when he was in the belly of the, of the great fish god was present amen and god hearkens to the prayers of zona so we can clearly see when we endure Suffering, it can be hard to feel that God is near. And yet from the isolation of the wealth belly, we can see from the Bible that Zonah cried out to God, and the Bible said God heard the prayer of Zonah. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So the God we worship, the God of the Bible, we can see according to the Bible, He is the God who always hears us. Amen. When nobody will hear us, He will hear you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when, when Zohar was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, even inside the belly, he cried out to God, and God hearkened to the prayers <coughs> of Zohar. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God is always listening to you and me when we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us pray. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. The servant of blessed Jesus who was really, really blessed and blessed. And now as we have come to uh, this item, it's time Jesus. for our testimony. So if anyone would like to share or sing a song, you are welcome to take it down. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now then let us directly go to the, to the prayer item. That is, we are going to pray for ABTS regular students. And ABTS correspondent students, Amen. Amen. Ministry in the different parts of the world. So let us pray honestly to God so that God may hear our prayers and answer our prayers. Let us all pray together. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Amen.
We pray for the legislature members, amen. The elected members, hallelujah. The parliament members and the cabinet ministers of this country, Lord. Once again, they will have that love and sympathy, that compassionate heart for the people of this country. Not just be a lead service, Lord, but in the heart and we are in reality, in ground, Father. They will be able to, Lord, how to provide help to those who are in need, Father. We pray for our leaders that you will also touch their hearts and minds, change their mind, Father. And give them the protection so they will be able to know. Hallelujah. Amen. Do they? In the right direction. Let this country come back in the right direction. Oh, let the world leaders. Hallelujah. Amen. Also give that helping hand to this country, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're the God who sees them. You're the God who answers the prayer all the time. Once again, we cry out to you, Lord Jesus, and we pray, Lord, please answer to our prayers, Lord. I'll help them to our prayers, Lord, because we belong to you. We are your children. We have no one else here in this earth, Father. Oh, that we are, that we belong to you, Lord. You alone are our God. Oh, that we are, you're the King of kings and Lord of lords, and we belong to you, Lord Jesus. You are our Father, you are our God and our Savior. Father in heaven, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Please hearken to our prayers, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring hallelujah. Restore the peace and happiness in this country. And bless the Abacus ministry, Lord, so that we can be at peace and help. We can hallelujah. Amen. Not just in word, hallelujah. But even on the ground, practically. We would be able to do something for this country and for the people who are serving and thriving with us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember our church members. Hallelujah. And all over the world. Hallelujah. We speak to them as well. We also pray for our brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Church members, we will all be with them. Protect them, Lord. Guide them under the mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep them now safe and sound. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray to the name of God. And also, once again, all the children was dear Father, in this hostile Father, may hey, hallelujah, would always protect you from the country. Not just from the virus, from the, but from the influence of the devil, from the influence of the Satan, Father. We all just keep them, keep them safe and sound, with physically and spiritually. Be with them all the time so they will remain an obedient children, Father. They will remain an obedient people and obedient students. And all within the heart of the army, disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the soldiers, Lord, of the Lord Jesus. We belong to you, Father, and we are crying out today to pardon to our prayers. May you receive all the glory, Father. We ask all this thing in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's meet at uh, 3.45. Yeah, you can start at 2.5 and then you can find it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.